Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. To DIY or not to DIY? That is the question. You guys know that I love me some DIYs. I've done my fair share here on this channel. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about DIYs and why some people say that they may be dangerous and why some people love them. I am one of those people that really enjoy DIYs, but I am very particular about the ones that I use. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha and I'm a skincare enthusiast. I post a lot of skincare, makeup, lifestyle, and sometimes hair related videos. So if that sounds like something that you're interested, then make sure that you are subscribed. And without further ado, let's get started. In the simplest terms, a DIY is a do-it-yourself project. Where beauty is concerned, it could be for your hair, your face, or the rest of your body. You can find a lot of these recipes on blogs online, on Instagram, TikTok, and even here on YouTube. And they can range in severity from three ingredients to 10 ingredients and more. DIY beauty has become really popular, especially in the natural skincare community because people have been looking for alternatives to some of the more expensive high-end products that they otherwise can't afford. And that's no shame. I'm a part of cheap, cheap gang, gang, period. I can't believe I actually said that in a video. Um, yeah, so a word of caution when it comes to DIY skincare. There are a lot of potentially irritating and harmful ingredients that I'm seeing in a lot of these DIYs, and these are predominantly fruits or ingredients that people are using to exfoliate their skin, like lemon or uh, strawberries, because that has BHA in it, or papaya, because that is a really good exfoliator. But once again, these are fruits. These are foods that are meant to be ingested rather than applied topically. And the reason I'm making this distinction is that when it comes to lemon, for example, and I've talked about this in a couple of my previous videos, there is no way to determine what the actual pH balance of a lemon actually is. The pH of a lemon is around two to three, and the skin's pH is around 5.5, give or take. Which means that the pH level of a lemon is closer to that of battery acid, which is pH level one, than it is to your skin, which is 5.5. So just understanding that it's really far away from your skin. It's potentially very volatile and there's no way to keep that um, stable. There's no way to measure that pH unless you have a full measuring kit here at your home. And you know, you could potentially be burning your skin rather than doing a light exfoliation. To take that even a step further, you have no idea what percentage of AHA or BHA is in that product. It could range from 2% to 7%. You don't know. And if you're somebody with already compromised skin, you have rosacea, you have acne in your skin, a compromised skin barrier, you could potentially be putting something that's more irritating on your already irritated skin, which is a recipe for disaster. And I have personally seen some of my friends as well get burns, actual chemical burns from using lemons, strawberries. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this because I've seen people actually have these type of reactions from using these products. And this is not to say that other ingredients that are made from companies won't give you reactions. I've had reactions from AHAs that are actually, I've actually purchased rather than making myself. And I've had reactions like that, which just means that it's too strong for my skin. I would just stay away from all the acidic fruits and vegetables, okay? Just leave the vegetables, just eat them. On the other spectrum of the dangerous DIYs, another ingredient that I see a lot of people use is baking soda. Baking soda is beautiful. It has this really beautiful quality that it gives to your skin. It makes your skin so smooth and makes you feel like you're actually cleansing yourself. But baking soda has a pH level of about eight, okay? And your skin likes to be a little bit more on the acidic side. So you're throwing off the pH balance by making it more alkaline. Then you maybe you don't bring it back, like there's just too much going on and you leave this area open for irritation, for a plethora of things to happen on your skin. Another thing that I would caution against is using things that don't actually belong on your face, like toothpaste, for example. A lot of people use the old toothpaste, the white, you know, the white thick toothpaste and put that on as a spot treatment. Toothpaste is not meant to be on your face and there are some irritating ingredients that are in it, like menthol and all these other plaque tartar fighting ingredients that you don't need on your actual skin and could actually burn your skin. So just be careful. 
you may get some great results from it. Just make sure, please, wear your sunscreen all day, every day, <laughs> and reapply every two hours. The only place where I use baking soda, um, I'll use it if I'm making a body scrub because, like I said, I like how that feels on my skin. But I make sure that in my body scrub, there are other ingredients. I also use it in um, foot soaks that I'm making because it's really good for, like, athlete's foot. I don't have athlete's foot, but it's really good for the scent that is on your feet, especially if you've been wearing sneakers all day. But once again, in very, very small quantities. Most people don't have preserving ingredients readily available in their kitchen cabinet to make sure their products don't develop mold, bacteria, all these other types of funguses and stuff that you don't want on your face. And putting it in the fridge, I mean, that's great for like one or two days, but there are some people who will keep it there for a week. Personally, when I do my DIYs, when I do any face masks, be it clay masks or body scrubs, I don't add any water whatsoever because as soon as you introduce water into the actual solution, it it's like a ticking time bomb and bacteria is bound to grow. Our products are created by scientists, by specialists, by people who have researched and trained for years to be able to formulate cosmetics. And if it was as easy as throwing everything in your pantry in a bowl and putting that on your skin to have clear skin, everybody would do it. Everybody would be a cosmetic formulator. But no, there are specific people who are dermatologists. Even dermatologists don't really formulate cosmetics, cosmetic formulators formulate cosmetics because there's a science that goes into it. There's a science in your microbiome, which is how your skin actually functions. There's a science to the ingredients and what part of the ingredient, whether it's the seed or the skin or the juice, like whatever it is that is the most effective without being harmful. And that takes a lot of research and education to be able to, to formulate the product. As much as I feel like people, myself included, tend to be a little wary of a lot of these products that we're seeing because there is a lot of consumer fear when it comes to the skincare industry and believing that these brands are putting ingredients in our products that are disrupting our endocrine system and giving us skin cancer and all that kind of stuff. And granted, maybe they are, I don't know. Most of us don't know because the effects of the products that we're using take a very long time to really show. So who really knows? as a definitive answer. But I want to believe that cosmetic formulators generally want to create good products, good products that are safe for the skin. There are some things that they put in there that are a bit questionable, but overall, I do believe that they want to create a good product. So as much as possible, just try not to jump on every single DIY that you see out there because not everything should be used on your face. Now going into ingredients that are safe to use in your DIYs, I mentioned before I love masks, I love talon clay, I love bentonite clay, beautiful for the skin, hibiscus powder, um, Moroccan clay, green clay, pink clay, razul clay, all of these are great things to use on your skin. They are actual minerals that are proven to be effective and used on your skin. Things like aloe. Aloe vera is an amazing ingredient that does wonders for the skin for its hydration, for its calming aspect. Things like glycerin, vegetable glycerin, very good. And a bunch of oils. Oils are super amazing for the skin. If you're looking for mask moisturizing masks or mo mask moisturizing serums or to give your mask like that nice moisturizing quality, use an oil. Things like fenugreek. You can use ayurvedic herbs and um, put those in your skin. You can use roses. Roses have great properties for the skin. Just make sure that you distill them and clean them properly. Um, then also other herbs like uh, basil. Basil is amazing herb for your skin. Green tea is an amazing herb for your skin. All of these are fine to use on your face and on your body because they're not food. <laughs> the predominant function is not to be a food. It's to be a medicinal herb or medicinal clay or medicinal something. It's a medicinal plant. And that is something that you can use on your body. The ingredients I'm talking about right now have been used since the age of ancient Egypt and beyond that. 
and they've been proven over a lengthy period of time to be effective on your skin. At the end of the day, sometimes it may not even be cost effective. The amount of money that you're gonna spend on getting all of these ingredients, getting all of these containers and all these other things, it may actually cost you more than going out and buying the actual product. And if you're still concerned with these mega corporations and the ingredients and the products that are available to you, then support a mom and pop. Support a small business, a black owned brand, and you know, use them because they're at least supporting the initiatives that you care about. But if you are someone who's interested in doing these DIYs and really wants to learn how to make cosmetics for yourself, then I would suggest doing your research. And as that is coming out of my mouth, that is a very loaded term. And I think I may do a whole video on that specific. Uh, the point that I'm bringing up is a, a resource that I'm giving to you. It's called Making Cosmetics. Now, this is something that I look to constantly. It's a wholesale website where you can purchase a lot of these really great ingredients to formulate your own cosmetics. I do this when I make my own deodorant, I do this when I make my face masks, and and not only does it provide you the actual ingredients, it actually provides you with step-by-step print out PDFs that you can follow. They also have videos as well here on YouTube that I'll link down below. And you can follow those recipes with the actual measurements that have been proven and tested to be safe and to be the right quantity that you're you're using in the product for it to be safe for your skin. So something like that is where I would say go because these are actual wholesale retailers and people, professionals who have already drafted the recipe for you. You just need to pick and choose what you want to add into it. So this is somewhere where I look all the time when I do my DIYs. Beautiful, beautiful resource. There's a few others that I use. If I remember them, I will put them down below as well. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and got something from it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what are your tips for DIYs. Do you think they're dangerous? Do you think that they're fun, cool, and exciting? I would love to know your thoughts. Click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my very next video. Bye!